Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of our mini lecture series on the Koopman operator and part two on the eigen decomposition. In part one we have mostly motivated why eigen decompositions are useful for linear dynamical systems and this part is going to be about the transfer of this eigen decomposition to the Koopman operator setting. And this is mostly going to be about eigen decompositions of linear operators, so of functions, uh, where there's a lot of literature available. So what I'm going to present is not new, but just a viewpoint of how to compute this on the Koopman operator. Okay, so what we need to ensure, first of all, is that the Koopman operator is in fact a linear operator, which can be very easily shown. And then we can start to define eigenfunctions and then see how this allows us to do the decomposition that we found so useful for linear systems in the video before. All right, so let's go there and study the linearity. And in fact, it's uh, straightforward to show what you need to do is you need to define a function that is composed of the sum of two functions plus some coefficients, and then show that this decomposes into multiple applications of the Koopman operator. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to study the Koopman operator applied to not one function, but let's call it alpha one times psi one plus alpha two psi two of x. Okay, so all I'm doing is using the definition of the coupon operator and then defining this specific observable function, which is a linear combination of two of them. And so what you can do is simply use what's here and say, okay, if we do it like this, then this means that I have alpha one psi one plus alpha two psi two of f of x. Uh, so all I'm really doing is plugging in the definition that tells us, um, well, if we have such an observable function, then what we do is we evaluate this observable function at the next time step, so after we have used the flow on our state. And so what you can do now is simply exploit the linearity. Why? Because this is what we said before, this observable function psi is an element of a function space. It's a linear vector space but of infinite dimension. Anyway, still the, the concept of linearity applies, which means that we can simply say this uh, expression here is the same as alpha one psi one of f of x plus alpha two psi two of f of x, okay? And so you already see there's not much to do really. This is exactly now the definition of the Koopman operator again, so the, the, the inverse um, applied to these individual elements. So what we get is alpha one k psi one of x plus alpha two k psi two of x. And so you see, due to the linearity of the function space f, where uh, psi is an element of, right, so each psi is an element of this linear space uh, in infinite dimension, we can exploit this linearity and we're basically done. So what we can do now is we can try to study specific observables that have favorable properties, okay? So what we're going to define is a specific observable which is going to be an eigenfunction that we're going to denote by phi. Right? And if we um, recall what we defined as an eigenvector, an eigenvalue for finite dimension operators, so matrices, um, we can simply do the same here. What this means is that the evaluation of this specific function 
has to result in using a scalar multiplication by the associated eigenvalue on this function. So you see very, very similar to the eigenvalue equation in finite dimensions, just here it's functions instead of, of vectors in, in finite dimension. Anyway, if we can do this, then we can simply say, or make an assumption, and we're going to study why this assumption is, is, is useful in some situations and, 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 and less useful in others. Um, so the assumption that we are going to use is that our uh, specific observable psi, uh, this one, can be expressed by a finite number of these eigenfunctions. Right? This finite number is an assumption that may be um, very challenging to, to, to verify or to get accuracy on, but we will discuss this later. So psi of x is, I'm going to add a small index here in a second, equal to the sum k equal to 1 until, let's call this e maybe, um, v k and then phi k of x. Okay, So this is my assumption. I can express my observable function psi by an expansion in these p eigenfunctions phi. Okay, So I said I'm going to use an index here, but um, not to change much, but just to indicate that this is really a component-wise expression. So the eigenfunction is really a mapping to usually to a scalar value. And then if we have a vector of observables, we get a vector of these coefficients. So the eigenfunction is based on a, on a scalar measurement usually. Okay, and so this defines a p-dimensional subspace. Right? Whereas we talked about infinite dimensions before, we now have a finite number of eigenfunctions, p, that define a subspace of our function space where we uh, study the system in. So we restrict ourselves to the subspace. Okay? And now let's assume we can do so. We are going to discuss details about this a little later. But if we can, then we can simply plug this into our definition of the Koopman operator and see what comes out. So what we have is k psi of x is now k applied to this psi, and I'm going to leave out the indices now to make my life easier, sum k equal to 1 to p, um, v k of x, excuse me, v k of x. And now you see what I can use is exactly this linearity, right? So you see it's nothing more but a sum over more than a single one. Right, so no, 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 more than two, here it's p elements, but still this, you know, linearity applies, obviously. And so what I can do is I can take out the sum and use the Koopman operator individually on my individual functions, which are the eigenfunctions in this case. So what I get is sum k equal 1 until p vk times the Koopman operator ck of x. Okay, and now you see here I can use my eigenvalue. Okay, so here what I have done from here to here is linearity. What I'm going to do next is to exploit the eigenvalue equation. So what I'm going to get is sum k equal 1 to p vk lambda k vk of x. So 
I'm using exactly this here. And now you see that we have this eigen decomposition that we introduced for linear systems as well. What we see here is we have now an eigenvalue. We have an eigenfunction. And we have what is denoted or known as the Koopman mode. Which is in simple terms simply sort of an amplitude, if you wish, how important this particular function is in reconstructing the observable. Okay, So very, very similar to the linear systems case, if you think about mode, uh, dynamic mode decomposition, then this is no coincidence. We are going to discuss this in one of the next videos. But this is really the key of the eigen decomposition. And questions that remain are how can we approximate this from data? And how can we approximate this in finite dimension? Right? I've simply introduced the P, but we will see that this is a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, but this is topics of the next videos. Controversies that need to be discussed as well are the question of, well, how well can we actually approximate the Kuhlmann operator on a finite dimensional subspace? Um, how to get these eigenfunctions on these subspaces? And also this eigenvalue question is very, very tricky. And for matrices, it's easy to see where well, we have you know, a number n of these eigenvalues. However, in function spaces, infinite dimensional vector spaces, we have an infinite number of these eigenvalues. And so there does not have to be the situation that these are really isolated eigenvalues. We can have a continuum of, of eigenvalue or continuous spectrum. And these are concepts that are basically impossible to carry over to finite dimensions. So it remains to be studied how we can actually create useful approximations from finite data in finite dimensions. But this is going to be the topic of the next videos. So thanks a lot for your attention and see you then.